Right here. What are people going to think of my story? Are they going to have any criticism of me? Hmm. Well, Gino, you sent nudes of Jasmine to your ex in order to make her jealous. Then you lied about it and got caught on national TV lying multiple times, so I'm sure people are going to have criticism for you, little guy. Our boy Mike first steps into the studio. He says, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I might have to defend myself today. Yes, Mike, I would assume you would have to defend yourself when you acted like a simpy dude the entire season. And all of a sudden, when Jimena makes it clear to you that she doesn't want to pursue a relationship with you any longer for the millionth time you have a total incel breakdown freak out you do realize that you're losing the best thing that you could have ever had i'm kind of a big deal i get them in a segment as one uno reverse card because we learned something in the last couple episodes that goes against their entire storyline and that's the fact that mike wasn't financially supporting jimena out of the goodness of his heart no he instead did so because he made her quit her job cam grilling in columbia and the way mike talked to jimena in the last couple episodes it's very clear that he wants to financially control this girl not support her i was able to keep you secure in a house so you weren't out on the street with you and your children. Mike's also hypocritical because throughout their entire segment he was saying things like I love your children like they were my own yet when Jimena breaks up with him for the millionth time and says that she doesn't want to be with him anymore Mike showed his true incel colors and he said I have proof that I pay the rent in this house so I'm not leaving. Regardless of what everyone thinks about Jimena I'm not a fan of her either but when a girl breaks up with the dude and she tells him to leave he should just leave. Still got the hat on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I take that thing off there bud. Yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> See, bald. <laughs> Jeez. I never seen two bald simps in a room. Always both of them gotta be ugly. <laughs> also, how jokes is it that Mike is trying to establish dominance here? I feel like we're watching Animal Planet or some shit. The thing that really hurts me about Mike and Gino is that they both made some really out of pocket comments about SWs, but they're both customers. As I said earlier, Mike met Jimena on a cam girl website and gave her paid leave. Meanwhile, Gino did the same thing with Jasmine because he met her on a sugar baby dating site. Next person to arrive is Kimba 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 Lay, who is actually growing on me because she tells funny jokes and she's the only person from this cast to publicly apologize on Instagram for her cringe actions on the show. Kim's origin story is a little bit different because she started off as a fan of the show. So like one of you who ended up crushing hard on Usman, AKA Soldier Boy, and then going on the show. We're cute together, right? No. It's kind of crazy that a fan made it on the show, to be honest with you. And it's even crazier that Soldier Boy couldn't come up with an original name. He's named after that song that we knew back in seventh grade. Remember that? That's how white people had to dance, bro. Before we continue roasting all the cringe people on the show, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. On Audible, as you all are probably aware, you can find the largest collection of audiobooks. And you know what audiobook has been hitting different lately? Will Smith's. <laughs> Jokes aside, his book is good but my favorite one to this day is Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Now that's a good, respectable man that doesn't slap comedians. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, including the best sellers and new releases. New members can try Audible for free for 30 days, and I recommend downloading the app because it makes it easy to listen to your favorite podcasts or audiobooks anytime, anywhere. I mainly listen to audiobooks when I'm cleaning my apartment or going to the gym. Lately, I've also been getting into True Crimes audiobooks, and they have a great collection of True Crimes audiobooks on Audible. If y'all are interested in getting started with Audible, visit audible.com slash wet sock or text wet sock to 500 500. Kim went over to Africa. She did the most to prioritize Usman and his happiness. She even bought him a PS5 and a MacBook Pro. She also begged him for his PP their entire segment. And when they weren't fucking in, things were rough. A lot of bad shit was said. When they were fucking in, things were calm and they actually seemed like they were in a good place. So Kim actually leaves Africa thinking that her and Usman are in a good place. The minute she's gone, all of a sudden he FaceTimes his ex Zara and starts flirting with her. Usman's ex Zara is another American woman, which doesn't surprise me because the only reason why Usman went on the show is to come over to the United States and get more publicity for his music and that's why he made his entire segment about his music. Also walking into the tell-all, Kim has no idea that Usman contacted his ex Zara and she finds out in the tell-all so stay until the end because that shit is juicy. Kim's also grown on me because she was also devastated that Ella cheated on her boy Johnny. I think Ella was trash for sleeping on this this nice man and the, the hurt on his face when I saw it. It was it just hurt my heart. Hey, I couldn't agree more, Kim. Ben Rathbun is also in the building. My last video covering Ben, we discussed the excuse he came up with for why he got a DUI. And what he said was that homeless people spiked his wine glass after he helped them at an inn. That's a former youth pastor that ended his marriage so that he could start dating the youth. Ben often ignores his children and instead shifts his focus from his kids to whatever young girl he's sleeping with at the time. Ben's partner in crime is Mahaguni, a 
Telenova actress from California, I mean Peru. We first see Ben on the tell-all. He informs us that he's very nervous walking into this and he thinks that he can take the bullets, but he's not sure if Mahaguni can. When Ben says he can take the bullets, he's of course referring to criticism, which is interesting because Ben historically is not good at taking criticism. After getting made fun of for a week for being cringe on the show, Ben made an IG video claiming to be an actor. After raising many red flags about his segment, Ben went to set the record straight and conducted an entire interview with Entertainment Tonight defending the legitimacy of his segment. And also feel free to watch my past videos on Ben Rathbun. I've made quite a bit of them if you want to get caught up on the drama with him. A lot of the guys uh, are not standing up to their women and they're allowing them to cross their personal boundaries of human dignity. I just want to know if they're like willing to stand for themselves. It's, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> this dude is such a hypocrite. At what point do you stand up for yourself with Mahogany, Ben? Bro, let's be real about it. You didn't stand up to this girl at any point in your segment. She also clipped you for a thousand dollars and whatever else you spent over there in Peru. That sand dune date looked mad expensive. So don't try to act like you're less of a simp than anybody else in this room. Next thing you know, Ella rise at the tell all the 29 year old weeaboo from Idaho Falls that is in a relationship with Emperor Johnny of China. I call Johnny an emperor because he's more than a king and I think I'm not the only one that shares that same sentiment. Johnny's hands down the best dude to ever be on the show and Ella cheated on him. In short, Ella isn't mature enough to be in a relationship with anyone because she can't even take care of herself. Ella throws out a disclaimer right away that she's well aware that she's gonna get a lot of shit for cheating on Johnny. And the person to actually throw the first jab is Kimba Leg. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get some harsh judgment on one of my things that happened in my story. So I'm interested to see what happens with that. You know, when you cheat, this is what you deal with. Oh, love the confrontation. It makes me like Kim even more. It actually makes sense why Kim is so bothered with Ella, and that's because Kim herself was cheated on after she prioritized a partner for a number of years. That person cheated on her, and then she entered the relationship with Usman. So in a way, Kim's relationship with Usman is a distraction from the pain that was inflicted on her by another person. But for me, there's a lot of judgment for him going over there and following my heart, which is crazy to me because that's what I should have done, you know? You seem to come on pretty strong. Oh shit, Benjamin from left field. I love watching all the NPCs fight. In fact, Ben actually looks like the Wish.com version of Blue Shirt Guy. Well, like, okay, guys are, I'm gonna stereotype now, so I'm gonna get in trouble. Okay. Did this dude really just put a disclaimer out before mansplaining? Hear me out, bro. If you already realize that what you're about to say is gonna be taken negatively by everyone in the room, why say it? We as men are the predators. We are lions looking for gazelles. You know what, fair point. I agree with Ben, he is definitely a predator. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of when Ash gave that seminar about how women can't go fishing. So this dude right here was a youth pastor, but he views women as gazelles that he needs to chase. All right. And you're kind of hoping that it's a bit of a race. You know, you don't want it to just like lay down. It's like, well, that wasn't fun. I was today years old when I saw on Instagram that Ben started a life coach page called the Fountain of Youth Program. Ben's actually been accused of being a predator multiple times, so the name is extra sus. Also in his interview with Entertainment Tonight, Ben was asked the question, are you a predator? And he basically said no, because he's in really good physical shape. It just doesn't add up. All seriousness, I'm a little confused because I thought in order to be a life coach, you yourself had to be successful, but I guess not. I guess you just have to be cringe on the show 90 Day Fiance. You know what, though? I'm pretty young myself, so I'm going to sign up for the Fountain of Youth program, and I'll be sure to keep you guys updated, so follow me for updates. If a gazelle ever attacked me, I wouldn't know what to do. Ben goes on to say, Me, it's a turnoff, but if Usman likes that sort of thing, all the power to him. But it seemed like he did it. Ben, believe it or not, gets in trouble for saying this to Kim and gets called away from the producers, and while he gets called away, he looks all shocked, like, what did I do wrong? Incredibly hypocritical for Ben to say these things to Kim because Ben chases girls his daughter's age. I and many others could form an argument that Ben is a predator, even a stalker by how Mahogany made it very clear when he was at the airport that her father didn't approve of him and didn't want him to come and he still showed up to Peru and also steered every conversation with Mahogany in order to get what he wanted out of the relationship. I lost my respect for him when he called me a predator. I did not like that. And I don't feel like I was a predator. I feel like I'm 51 years old. I went for what I wanted. It's for sure a double standard because what Ben basically said is old woman dating young man, cringe, bad, but old man dating young girl, acceptable. I can see why Ben's attracted to gazelles because he's a failure as a father, a partner, a businessman, a pastor, and a driver. You see, Ben Hemen, your fragile ego can never handle a lioness, which is why you target young, impressionable girls that you view as gazelles. Next thing you know, Memphis shows up and Kim reveals that her and Memphis are friends. So already we got a little alliance with 
Kim in Memphis on some Game of Thrones shit. We're all very surprised and excited to see yes. you in Memphis. It's a pleasure to meet you <laughs> for the very first time. Hey, Hamza's looking mad studious with the glasses on. I think Hamza in Memphis understood the assignment because the outfits are looking great. I actually just made a whole video summarizing their relationship if you want to watch that after this video. But right now, the question on everybody's mind is, is Memphis's baby Hamza's or no? And if she was only in fact in Tunisia for two weeks, how come she got pregnant so fast? This makes people think that she was actually pregnant before she touched down in Tunisia, which in turn would mean Hamza, you are not the father to bring back the Murray show. I heard that shut down recently. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. I don't know if it's true or not, but that would explain why she was so eager to have sex with him right away in Tunisia. Why don't you just take it off, Gino? Take it off, Gino. I actually have a theory about this. So do you guys remember the villain from the first Harry Potter that wouldn't let us see the back of his head? What if it was Gino the entire time? So Mike, what is the status of your relationship today? Um, we were able to work it out and today we're back together. Wow. Yeah. Oh, how the turns tabled. My question to Mike is how much did this cost? Mike and Amanda's entire segment can actually be summarized by what Mike's father even said about the situation. And that's that money can't buy love because when the money runs out, so does the love. I don't know how it's possible that Mike and Amanda are together when I've seen TikToks with her with another dude. So I'm confused. Have you like sent DMs or anything to anybody that you have met through this cast? No. Jasmine and Gino are a really interesting couple because even though Gino has lied to her and betrayed her trust multiple times, she still loves him and I don't know why. At the beginning of their segment, I didn't like Jasmine because of how controlling and demeaning she was towards Gino. I think the main problem that they encounter is that Jasmine wants to be the center of Gino's world and he has a wandering eye. Benjamin's friend, Jessica. Have you messaged her? Uh, no. Okay, but there's not been any communication between you and her at all. Uh, uh no. Why is Sean asking you these questions? Yeah, it's even more awkward because earlier in the tell-all, he was all excited, like, me and Jasmine are gonna get married and I filed all the paperwork for the visa. Still working on that impression. It's hard to pull off because the dude sounds just like Marty Huggins. I think she messaged me, hi, and I responded back, hello, how are you, or something. So first, Gino, there was no communication at all. Now there is communication. What can I say? Typical Jasmine Gino behavior. This dude's lying about whatever he's being accused of. And Jasmine's looking over there like she wants to lay the smack down on him. Like Logan Paul did in the WWE, rocking that $5 million Pikachu limited edition card. I've actually lost count of how many times Gino has been busted for texting other girls. The more I'm looking at him, I'm connecting the dots. Do you know who Gino also kind of looks like? Do you remember when Voldemort was a little fetus in Harry Potter 4? Hi, Jessica. I have to ask out of my curiosity, but are you Sicilian with a cowboy hat, smiley cowboy hat? Yes, I need to take this ring. <laughs> Jasmine's like, oh no, that bitch did it. Engagement ring off on the table. I'm confused because how are you going to ask this girl if she's Sicilian and then put a cowboy hat emoji and not an Italian flag emoji? That's sus. I'm not the host and it's obvious because if I was, this show would be run a lot differently. But my question to Gino would be, why even open up the line of communication? Because I'm connecting the dots right now. You live in Michigan. Ben's friend lives in Michigan. You trying to get together for Sicilian pasta night, cocksucker? You wanted to suck your meatballs? Go fuck yourself, you cock. Hold on, hold on. She responded, LOL, I'm not, but my husband is very Italian. Gino, that shows me that you reached out to her first. Hey, she did the right thing bringing up the husband right away on loyalty. Unlike someone we know, Gino. Also, if this bro's the husband she's talking about, he has about 100 pounds on Gino. So Gino might want to watch his back because he would get click clacked so fast. Gino's built like Kit from Napoleon Dynamite. I think out of the entire cast, the only two people that he could probably sleep are Mike and Alina. No, she originally reached out and said hello to me first. Okay. And... Would you be able to pull that conversation up on your show? Show it. You have your cell phone, um, show it. Show it to Sean. I don't think I have that. No. I'm assuming that Jasmine's still in this relationship to get over to the United States because there's no valid reason to be in a relationship with Gino. Later in the tell we find out that Gino also has a masturbation problem, which doesn't come as a shock to me because of the many years of admiring girls from afar. He's probably addicted to porn. Jasmine says she went to the gym, asked Gino to wait for her to get back for them to have sex. And when she got back, Gino was avoiding her. Gino told her no to sex because he was playing with his pee pee earlier. Jasmine says the word pee pee. Mike starts hysterically laughing like a school girl. When this is all happening, I'm taking sips of my monster, not sponsored, and I'm just thinking to myself, Mike, why are you laughing so hysterically about this, given the fact that you're 34 years old, live in your dad's basement, and probably play with your pee-pee all the time? 
I just don't know what you find so funny about this. I have discovered uh, that you know prefer to masturbate rather than making love to me. <laughs> Mike looks like he had a Jimena flashback. Is this relatable or what? The situation's quite different for them though because Jimena would rather Mike plays with his PP so that he doesn't come anywhere near her. So it's a bit, it's like opposite. Brexit was a mistake. Why did we leave? Gino definitely got a better sugar baby than Mike did and you can tell that by how Jasmine absolutely gasses him the fuck up. When he make love to me, it's good. Jasmine goes on to say that the entire month that Gino was in Panama, they only had sex one time, which is dog shit Katie spread, especially because of all all the blue pills he brought with him for the trip. Where do you get the idea that I'm masturbating? Baby, I do your laundry. Ooh, buddy, have some class go jerking in the shower. What are you doing? Busting your tidy whities and then being like, Jasmine, I busted in my tidy whities. As Ben would say, maybe the issue is that Jasmine is not a submissive gazelle. <laughs> Confess, I'm more into masturbation, baby. And if that is the case, I want, you know, to masturbate the two of us together, but I want to be part of the equation. In addition to carrying the entire part one of the tell-all, Jasmine's making a lot of sense here. I think her honesty is commendable, and I agree with her here. I wouldn't want my partner to be masturbating to another person. I actually think from the way Jasmine just says what she's thinking, she has a lot of potential to even be greater than Angela Deem is, and even more shocking, without being as negatively perceived as Angela was. I don't know why you keep saying I like to per or prefer to masturbate, it's not true at all. But you were there for an entire month and you only had sex one time? No, that's, no. Do you know at this point, I think zero people believe you because you've been caught lying throughout your entire segment. You as well as I know that communication and honesty are vital in a relationship and in that department, Jasmine is quite literally putting the team on her back. I love it, I'm vegan, but I want your freaking meat. Give me the meat, I want it. You know, I'm 35. I shouldn't be begging a man for sex. What can I say? Jasmine's trying to gozzle his glizzy, but Gino's all capped. Do you guys get it? Because he always wears a hat, never takes it off. Next thing you know, they talk about how Gino was on that Seeking Arrangements website and was paying for girls to date him and sleep with him. Gino, of course, lies about the number of girls he hooked up with on that website. Gino at first said it was only about five girls. Probably less than five. Then Jasmine chimes in to quickly correct Gino and say that it was about 30 plus girls. Now, something I don't like about Jasmine is that she refuses to admit that she herself was a sugar baby despite meeting Gino on that website. I have my best friend, you know, and she suggested uh, putting my ad on a website, you know, for dating internationally. I have no idea what the website was about. That is in the past, okay? Mm, Jasmine, you didn't know what the website was when you looked up the website, made a profile on said website, and then entered an arrangement with Gino on the website. You still didn't know what it was like, huh? Who are you trying to fool? If you're a sugar baby, just own up to it. You know what I mean? I think she cares too much about what everybody thinks about her. And I've seen that with a lot of people on the show, actually. A lot of them care. If you're just authentic, I think people would like you guys more. Gino paid for a lot of Jasmine's cosmetic surgery before they went on the show. Is Gino a weird fuck? Absolutely. Does Jasmine have a lot to work on herself? Absolutely. Now let's change the channel and talk about Kim and Usman. Kim's 50 years old from San Diego and Usman is 32 years old from Africa. On the tell-all, Kim admits that since coming back to the United States, Usman has been very distant with her and and he actually gets really defensive when she brings this up. Kim then informs the audience that she's willing to let Usman take a second bride in order to give him a child because he really wants a kid and she herself can't give him another kid. I don't think I will ever love any woman in my life the way I love you. I know that. But having the child is important. And I know that. Somewhere in the world, Michael's watching this like, damn, you're so lucky. While Kim is telling everybody this, Usman says, I love you so much, baby, because he's getting his way. People who are saying, you know, that cheating is horrible, like it's not I- not the same thing, Ella, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of offended you said that. Let me know what you guys think about this, but I think the way that Ella is trying to continuously provide excuses for her cheating on Johnny is disgusting. The way she constantly tries to make herself the victim pisses me off. Kim's talking about a completely different issue and Ella takes it upon herself to throw her antics into the mix. As lovely as Johnny was on the show and it was a pleasure getting to know him and his family and his culture, I still believe that their spot on the show should have went towards a couple that actually met in real life. Next thing you know, they bring out the star of the tell-all. That's right, Kim's son, Jamal, who is hands down the realest dude to walk into this room. Well, first, I'm never gonna call Usman my stepdad. You got Usman a MacBook and a PS5. Those are expensive gifts. She managed a lot for him there. So it's like, I don't know if he wants an assistant or if he wants a girlfriend. You've got a good point. The highlight from Usman and Kim's segment is they play the clip of Usman flirting with his ex Zara the minute Kim left Africa. Usman says, if I should ask, do you miss anything about me? Zara responds, yes, I miss you. Meanwhile, Kim says, wow, this is humiliating. 
skating. Remember, this is Kim's first time seeing this footage. She had no idea he did this behind her back. While this is going on, Jamal, Kim's son, says, oh shit. Usman goes on to ask Zara if we are going to get back together. Zara cuts him off and asks, is that what you want? He responds, I don't know. Am I gonna get that real love I had before? To sum this up in one sentence, this is a really scummy move from Usman. That's up. That's really up. Let's be honest about it, guys. Since the beginning of their segment, it was very clear that Usman wasn't as into her as she was into him, and he was just prioritizing his music. Everyone could see this but Kim. She was very delusional about the situation, but now she's starting to see what we all saw from the beginning. I know it to sound crazy, and you may not believe it, all of you. I would never cheat. Well, like, that's cheating, though, is calling up your ex and being like, let's get back together. The only form of cheating isn't the physical one. There's multiple forms of cheating. I think the dishonesty from Usman is gross, and it's especially fucked up because he's wearing the gift that Kim got him while he's video chatting with Zara. Kimbali, calm down. Kimbali, don't cry. Don't cry. Let me know what you guys thought about today's video. Comment below, subscribe. Let's be friends, let's be friends. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.